Hey, I'm Dan, and today we're starting our series on the book of Revelation. If you've ever read this book before, you'll know that it's different from any other book in the Bible. When God gives someone a revelation, it means that he's showing them something new, and sometimes it can come as a pretty big surprise. Let's watch this. So what on earth is all about this? <laughs> is this all about so far? <laughs> Hi friends, Duan here. I know in this day and age of smartphones and devices, we don't always get a chance to actually sit down and write letters. But one thing that I have been doing is journaling in a book and writing down things that have been happening in my life that I found exciting or different. And it's so amazing to go back through that book and just see how God has been working in my life and how he's still working in my life. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because today we're talking about the book of Revelation and the book of Revelation is a collection of letters. So before I get ahead of myself, we're starting a new series called Revelation New. So the word revelation means a new, surprising, and a previously unknown fact. God is revealing something new to his people. So new refers to the newness that Jesus brings and also that God is making all things new. And that brings us to our big idea that Jesus is worth worshiping. Now, Revelation was written after Jesus died, rose again, and went up to heaven. Now, I want to warn you that Revelation is a little bit strange and mysterious and interesting, but let's take a look. So, Revelation is a letter that was written by a man named John, and he wrote down a revelation that he received from Jesus. God wanted him to write it down so that he could give it to his people to show them what would happen in the future. An angel visited John, and this letter is what he saw and experienced. Let's read what John wrote. I, John, am writing this letter. I am sending it to the seven churches in Asia Minor. Now, Asia Minor is the modern day Turkey. May grace and peace come to you from God. He is the one who is and who was and who will come. In other words, God is, he's in the present, he was, he has always been there and he will come. He will be present in the future. God is above, around and through time. Let's continue reading. May grace and peace come to you from Jesus Christ. He is the faithful witness, so what he has shown can be trusted. He was the first to rise from the dead. He rules over the kings of the earth. Glory and power belong to Jesus Christ who loves us. He has set us free from our sins by pouring out his blood for us. He has made us members of his royal family. He has made us priests who serve his God and Father. Glory and power belong to Jesus Christ forever and ever, amen. Jesus loves us, he has set us free from our sins, and he's made us a part of his royal family. Then he uses two verses from the Old Testament, from the books of Daniel and Zechariah, to tell us that Jesus is coming with the clouds and everyone will see him. Let's read what comes next. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the God who is and who was and who will come. I am the Mighty One. Well, what does that really mean, the Alpha and Omega? Those are actually the first and the last letters in the Greek alphabet. So he is the beginning and the end, the first and the last, before all things and after all things. Then John says, I'm a believer just like you. And one day the Holy Spirit came to me and gave me a vision. And I heard his voice like a loud trumpet. And he said to me, write these things down and send it to the churches in Asia Minor. Then John turned around to see who was speaking to him. And he saw seven golden lampstands. And in the middle of them, there was someone standing there that looked like the Son of Man. And he was wearing a long robe with a gold cloth across his chest. Who do you think that might be? Jesus. And John describes him. His hair was white as wool, white as snow, and his eyes were blazing like fire. And his feet were like bronze metal glowing in a furnace. In other words, he glowed in all the most amazing ways. And his voice, his voice was like rushing waters. John tells us that in his right hand, he held seven stars. John also describes that coming out of Jesus' mouth was a sharp sword with two edges. Now, I know that sounds scary, but that's a poetic way of saying the Word of God. In many areas in the Bible, it talks about the Word of God as being a sharp sword with two 
two edges. Then John said, when I saw him, I fell down at my feet like I was dead. But he put his hands on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living and I was dead. But look, I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the grave. In other words, there is nothing for you to be afraid of or fear. This is Jesus. And Jesus said to John, write down everything you've seen. Write down what is happening and what will happen. And here is the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand. They are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands represent the seven churches. So what on earth is this all about? It's all about Jesus and his amazing, incredible power and awesomeness, his love for us and the way he welcomes us into his royal family. And because of all this, Jesus is worth worshiping. And that's all, folks. This is Duan. Thank you for joining me today. Looking forward to seeing you for another one. Turn to the person next to you and answer the following questions. Question time. In the God story, the Lord said, I am the God who is and who was and who I am the mighty one is no more, is going for a run, will come, or we'll see you later. Will come. The writer of the letter, John, tells about what he saw. Someone dressed in a long robe with a gold strip of cloth around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool and his eyes were like a blazing fire. Who was it? Peter? Jesus, James, or his own reflection. Jesus. Game time! Candy Chaos. How many times can you say the key verse before things get messy? Say it with me. May you have power together with all the Lord's holy people to understand Christ's love. May you know how wide and long and high and deep it is. Ephesians 3, verse 18. Get ready. Three, two, one, go. God said he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And there's so many different ways that we can see that. For instance, the way that God created the earth and everything that's in it. Let's check in with Chris and see how he experiences God in nature. I'm Chris. People kind of know me as the nature guy. So I, I think one of the things that draws me to places like this is you can hear things better, you can smell things better, it's quieter, it's totally different. You're able to just be in a totally different, you know, mental place when you're out here. Things look like they are designed to be appreciated. It, it looks like something, somebody made that or set things into motion in such a way that it could continue to be made again and again, continue to be beautiful and unique each time. Um, so that adds to my, you know, my own personal faith and why there's a creator and not everything was just random. I think fall's my favorite season. The bright colors and the crisp mornings and foggy essence and, uh, it's kind of the final blast of beauty for the warm season anyways. Like spring, summer is nice, but everything's pretty much the same color. Yeah, there's flowers, then autumn is just this big flash and this explosion of color. 
and it's magnificent for a relatively short period of time, and then it's gone. And again, it just seems like art in a way to me, actually. And another way that I'd say my faith kind of impacts how I view things in nature is just uh, the way I see purpose in this design, like how our lives have purpose, there's a reason for it, and I can see that everything in nature has a, has a purpose. You know, one animal supports the life of another, one plant supports the life of another, it goes around and around. Like recently I saw a medium-sized tree and a bear had climbed it to get some berries at the top, and the weight of the bear snapped the tree, and the tree actually broke over and was laying all over the ground. So now that's happened, but now a beaver is gonna be able to have access to those limbs and it's gonna eat them and add to its beaver lodge or beaver dam and continue to dam up an area and flood it. And that ecosystem will change and now all kinds of insect lives and life and dragonflies and other fish species will be able to populate there and it's gonna turn into a swamp and now the swamp environment might grow lily pads in 10 years. And now moose are gonna come out and feed on those lily pads in 10 years. And because there's moose in the area, now maybe wolves will move into the area in 20 years. This kind of thing revolves around, like there's a purpose to everything. And it just, it seems intentional basically. And it kind of reminds me that there's an intention behind my life as well, whatever that is, you know? I'm definitely a big moose guy. Uh, they're kind of a silly looking animal actually, but I think they're also really majestic. And I don't know, there's just something, they're, they're an iconic Canadian wilderness animal in some way, right? Jesus is God and created all of this. Like it's unbelievable. Like it's so, it's really, honestly, it's, it's straight up impressive. And then this God, you know, chose to go under unbelievable human scrutiny and suffering on earth and then actually die in like the worst way, you know, for the people that put him underneath that suffering. That totally makes him seem, you know, worth, worth worshiping. Question time. In the life story, what did Chris see that he thought was especially amazing? What are some cool things God has created that you thank him for? I loved seeing all the animals. And to see a moose in the wild, how incredible. But to bring us back to the big idea, whether we look at nature or creation or the fact that Jesus gave his life for us, we can see that Jesus is absolutely worth worshiping. Let's break into our small groups now and see what this looks like in our own lives. <laughs> 